Check, check. Hello, hello, and welcome to another beautiful day here on Kitsch.com, the food network for a new generation. I am Montana Max, ready to rock and roll. What is the day today? Today is Thursday? Beautiful Thursday here in the Ozark Mountains. And with me, as always, is the talented and lovely Kansas City Jen, my partner in food, love, and life. Hello! Hi! Are you ready for another exciting episode on Montana Max Barbecue TV? Yes. Yes, I hope you are too, as we are getting ready to rock and roll some Mahi Mahi Bowls. So easy, so simple, so delicious, and so easy to do. Perfect, perfect uh, for a light dinner or an easy lunch. Yay, somebody's happy, somebody's clapping away there. They're ready for a little Montana Max barbecue action. Quentin Go says, what's up? What's up, Mr. Quentin? Hello, coming all the way from Belgium to join us today. If this is your first time in the kitchen with us, if this is your first time here on Montana Max Barbecue TV, let's give you the tour. Of course, we, oh, and I forgot to do it again. That is two oh, times this week. no. Two times this week. I was all in a in a flurry to get, get my apron straight, and I forgot to set my overhead camera. Now we can give you the tour. Let's go ahead. We've got our stove cam down in the bottom corner here in our main angle, and we can flip between those two. That's not too bad for just flying blind. Let's go that way. There we go. And we've got right there our overhead cam for you. And if you're thinking to yourself, I cannot see what you are doing. That is too small in the corner of my phone. Fret not, my friends, because we can go ahead and give you that side perspective there. And of course the aerial perspective as well to give you a little more manageable view. And then I become small in the corner like an Oompa Loompa to keep you uh, abreast of everything that we are doing here in the lovely culinary world. Well, as I said, we are coming to you from our home kitchen in the Ozark Mountains, and we've had some unseasonable weather, or seasonable, but uh, either way, it's a winter wonderland outside. We do do a lot of outdoor cooking. Uh, so let's go ahead and take you out to the deck. And there is the deck cam. You can see uh, we've got uh, some snow out there, so we're not gonna trudge through that. But unlike the other day, the sun is shining today, and soon that snow will be gone, and we will be back outside. Hopefully this weekend we'll do a little outdoor cooking. We've got some uh, game day theme type recipes that we've got coming up uh, this weekend as well. If you uh, have not followed us on Kitsch, make sure you do check out our upcoming shows that we've got going on. We've got a lot of fun recipes, including what we're doing today. And this is so easy, so easy. It's basically a four ingredient recipe that's going to fill your heart, fill your soul, and fill your tum-tum with deliciousness, right? <laughs> what are you laughing over there? Do you, do you want to fill your tum tum with deliciousness? <laughs> yes. Yes, she does. All right. So let's go ahead and get ready to rock and roll. We will be using our stove top over here. We'll be using our oven as well. We've got that currently preheating. The temp is rising and we are going to be getting that to 425 degrees. All right. So in the meantime, in the meantime, we're going to go ahead and pop over a nonstick pan here. The four ingredients the main four players in this recipe that we have in front of us here 
is, of course, some beautiful cuts of mahi-mahi right there, yes, uh, which is a sweeter white fish. Very awesome, very healthy, uh, nice, light, and flavorful. It uh, doesn't really have that, uh, that fishy taste. It's, like I said, more on the sweeter side of the spectrum. Then we've got some beautiful veggies here. So we're going to be using asparagus and cauliflower. I actually saw uh, somebody was cooking a cauliflower recipe online the other day. Uh, and I it was like, it's so genius. And the, out, all out of vegetables, uh, they made a cauliflower bighorn sheep. It was about this big and they put him out on the grill and his body was the cauliflower and then his horns were carrots and stuff. It was really cute and really well done. But anyways. Can we do that? Uh, maybe Food someday art. I'll make you a cauliflower bighorn sheep. Okay. And then we are also going to be using hummus. All right. A couple different, uh, applications of the same hummus here. We're going to be using a flavored hummus. This is as all of our recipes, highly customizable and very delicious. But if you want to mix it up and throw different things in, by all means, we are going to be using, uh, a lemon garlic, uh, infused hummus here. Uh, but there's tons of different types, red pepper hummus, plain hummus. Uh, that are out there on the market. So feel free to, you know, put your own spin on it with your own flavored hummus, right, babe? This is my favorite type of hummus. This is her favorite, hence yes. why we're using it today. But the lemon and the garlic combination with it is going to work exceptionally well with uh, our fish, all right? So we've got, uh, like I said, the oven preheated. It's almost a temp. Let's get cooking, shall we? We're going to need a nice uh, oven safe nonstick pan here. And I'm going to just put a light drizzle of olive oil on there. And just to keep my hands from getting overly dirty, I'm just gonna go ahead, grab a little piece of paper towel here and spread quickly. There we go, to go ahead and grease up the bottom of that pan a little bit so it's nice and even and my hands stay nice and we're all good to go. And we're gonna go ahead and take our beautiful cauliflower from our giant plate of vegetables. Yum, yum, yum. Uh, and get those right onto the pan here. We want these, if you get the giant florets, make sure you break those up. We want them in roughly bite-sized pieces, uh, so about an inch or smaller here. Try to keep them as consistent as you can. So we have even cooking, okay? We're gonna go ahead and spread those out there, and we're gonna come back with our olive oil right here. This is one of our my favorite utensils. Jen got me this. I'm gonna take a moment just to say thank you Thank you, Jen. Isn't Look how it pretty? That yeah. is. it's a hand-blown glass so olive beautiful. oil container. If, I love if, it. If, I love it too. If only every olive oil got such a beautiful ride like that. Yeah, <laughs> the, the the chat is loving that too. Look yeah. at that. They're like, it's I'm so in love pretty. with your olive oil bottle, and it's all mine. That's one thing I'd love to be able to do is make handmade hand-blown glass. <laughs> Wouldn't that be a Cheers. challenge? They're, they're blowing that. it up with the kitsch emotes today. I love that. I love that. <laughs> we are celebrating. So we've got the olive oil uh, there. And I'm going to, if you've watched any of our past shows on kitsch this week, you saw the appearance of our brand new tiny wood spoon. There we go. It's, it's... a tiny wood spoon. And we're going to use that. <laughs> Too small for Max. <laughs> it's perfect for this application. Yeah. We are going to toss this cauliflower just right on the pan here. Uh, and get a nice even coating with our olive oil. We just do a nice little drizzle, drizzle, right? We don't want to overdo it. It shouldn't be swimming in olive oil, but we do want a nice even coating that we're going to go ahead and just move it around nice and lightly. We don't want to break up that cauliflower anymore. We want it to have a nice body to it. So we're just going to go ahead and just move it around there on the tray with our little wood spoon. <laughs> I feel a little wood spoon theme song coming on. We'll have to work on that one. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> all right. And now we are going to season. We're all about building layers of flavor. And today we're going to be using two Montana Max seasonings. We're going to be using Mountain Magic, which has been the theme for the week. But uh, we're going to break out a new one here today, which is fantastic on so many different proteins uh, and seafood. It is, but we're not using it on seafood. Oh, no, no, no. We're going to be using it on veggies because it wakes veggies up. Letter Buck, right there with Montana Max Letter Buck barbecue rub and seasoning. Uh, it's really got a nice, uplifting, savory uh, tartness. Not so much tartness. Tang. Tangness. Kind of a tang. That's a tangy, <laughs> tangy, 
tangy flavor, but tangy real, with a little sweet. Tangy with just like me, just like your old friend Montana Max. Tangy <laughs> with a little sweet, uh, but it really wakes up uh, vegetables. So we're gonna go ahead and do a nice side to side motion here. Quentin has a question. What's your favorite veggie? What's my favorite veggie? Good question. That is a good question. Uh, I can tell you right now, one of Jen's least favorite veggies, and that is carrots. I love carrots. I love them raw, cooked, and everything in between. I'm a big fan of carrots. I, I don't know. That's definitely in my top three veggies. Uh, but Jen does not like the carrots. What's your favorite vegetable? Good question. I like that. Well, I love you too, Quentin. What's your favorite veggie? You give me yeah. a minute to think about it while we're chatting here. I actually love artichokes. Ooh, good one. Really love artichokes. And broccoli, I think, can be broccoli, you can't go wrong with that, especially like the baby broccoli. I like that. I don't mind broccoli, but not in my top three. Mm. Not in my top three. Now, if we're talking baby vegetables, Let's let's tell you this. One of my favorites, baby corn. Definitely top oh three. Oh my gosh. I that's, love that baby corn. That's I don't not even know real. Why. I just corn. do. I just do. It's... Quentin loves the carrots like you. Hey, I love, love boy. the carrots. There yeah. we go. We've got a nice light seasoning here. Oven is preheated. Let's kick it back to the main screen. Uh Quentin's favorites, cucumber. Cucumber is a good one. Cucumber's very versatile, yeah. used in lots of different cuisine. Yeah. Cucumber. I like, that. Got, I like that a lot. Gotta too. have some love Can for eat the cucumber, right? And it, and they it's make just pickles. A little salt. Talk about versatility. Yeah. You ever seen a broccoli Good. turn into a pickle? <laughs> no. <laughs> Good one. Yeah. I wonder yeah. if Montana's here. Montana, if you're in the shadows, uh, what's your favorite vegetable? All right. So we are going to go ahead and uh, take our cauliflower here, middle rack, 425 degrees. We're going to start roasting that down there in the oven. All right, let's set a timer. Alexa, set timer for 10 minutes. That's going to be about half the cooking time. Potatoes. Is that Montana? Yes. Montana. That's in your top three. Yes, I, I, know lo that. I love me some taters. I love me some taters. See, I that's another do. opposite with us. Like, I'm not a potato or a carrot person. She's not. She's not at all. Weird, huh? <laughs> you got to love them taters and caters. Anyone else? Want to and if there's anyone favorite. else, feel free uh, to <laughs> join in. us here. And thank you for joining us on Kitsch.com. But that's a great icebreaker that Quentin brought to us there. If you're if you're sitting there, you're like, I'm not sure what I want to tie. Now you got some got some fuel for your fire right there. What's your favorite vegetable? We're happy you're here. Thank you for joining us today on Kitsch. All right, we're gonna get some heat in the pan here uh, and get that warmed up. Okay, let's go ahead and turn that fan on low and get a little olive oil back into the pan back here because we're going to saute up some beautiful asparagus. All right, so we've got a lot of asparagus here. This is very nice. Uh, and we're going to cut this down to, to for a couple different reasons. Uh, number one, to decrease the cooking time, and we're going to get a nice saute on that. And by the way, uh, we've mentioned it all week, but if you're just joined us, uh, this is your first show with us. We have started new this year right there. Boop, boop, doo -doo. We're composting uh, because we do outdoor gardening. We absolutely love growing our own uh, produce. And so uh, waste not, want not right there. There's a little stem that's not going to work. Into the compost it goes, not the landfill, and turns into beautiful soil to continue that cycle of life. Now we've got some beautiful asparagus here, okay? And we are going to go ahead and cut these down uh, for a little easier cook time. And just for a little presentation difference than having just the big long ones here. So we're going to go ahead and we've got our Nakiri. We've got our vegetable chopper out here. Let's flip it back over. There we go. Bird's eye perspective for you coming in large and in charge. And we're going to cut these down into basically thirds. Okay. There we go. Just like so. We're just going to line them out, do them in a few batches here while we're waiting for our stove. To get that pan all nice and warmed up, I've got it set at a medium to medium high heat for this vegetable saute. Now, we, we got olive oil in there. It's not a high heat oil, so we want to be careful there and not get the pan too hot, but we do want it nice and hot. Right, babe? That's right. And That's Quentin's right. wondering your, what your favorite fruit is. Oh, favorite fruit. That's not his favorite uh, category. That's probably your, your least favorite food category is 
fruit. I can easily say my I fa- love fruit. My favorite fruit is oranges. I do I do love I figured oranges. it would be a citrus. I do like citrus. I'm a big fan of citrus. I love uh red grapefruit. Too tart for me. Too tart. No, you, you can get if you get really good red grapefruit. Like ruby be red? Yeah, the ruby red The ruby red? It's very delicious and sweet. Yeah, I don't know. I'm just I've never been a, a big fruit guy. Uh, but I like oranges a lot. You like huckleberries? I do like huckleberries. <laughs> I do. And blueberries. I don't and mind apples. You like strawberries, so, okay? Yeah, I, so when it comes to fruit, I prefer it in its raw state, okay? Uh, cook it like I like apples. I lo- I'll eat a raw apple, you know, Johnny Max apple seed here, like take a bite out of an apple, slice it up or whatever. But I tell you this, I very much dislike apple pie because most of the time the apples are all smushy. And I'm a texture. I'm, I'm very much a texture eater. And I don't like that. What, what I perceive is a slimy texture. Okay. So as a kid, did you not like applesauce? Applesauce is different because it's all macerated. I, I need applesauce. I eat applesauce right now. Would you it, eat the chunky applesauce? I like that. No. See, there were, there were starting to cross some lines again. Oh, okay. no. <laughs> Quentin says, for me, it's a hard one. Kiwi, banana, or apple? Kiwi. Kiwis are good. Kiwi. I like bananas too. Didn't expect that one coming out on you there. Kiwi. Mm-hmm. That fuzzy fruit. Kiwis are good. Kiwis. I, I don't mind a kiwi. All right. Let's take it on over here to the stove, Cam. There we go. We got that oil in there. We got that pan heating up. And we've got some beautiful asparagus. There we go. Is the camera just? See, we've got that right on the cutting board. Let's go ahead and get that into the pan there. Got a little sizzle going, not too shabby. Be careful if you stick your hands in a hot pan. I am a professional. I am tempered to heat quite a bit, uh, but you still want to be careful there. Use a wooden spoon or some device. Uh, safety first, as always, in the kitchen. Right I'm, here. Yes, I missed Mom Tana had said uh, carrots are probably her number one. Same as you. Oh my gosh, that's where you get it. That's it's hereditary. So. It's hereditary. Hereditary. Huh? Hereditary. <laughs> All right. I just went ahead and dropped in a little bit uh, more of uh, some olive oil in there. And let's go ahead and drop a little here, just a little bit. We can always add more. But I've got some Himalayan sea salt, that pink Himalayan sea salt. Let's give those veggies a little bit of love. Remember, you can always add more salt in. Darn near impossible to resaltify that and take her on out, as old Montana Max will tell you. Let's go ahead. I've got a, a, a multi a multi pepper grinder here as well. We'll just go very simple here. Salt and pepper. Salt and pepper's here. But it's got a little pizzazz because we're using that beautiful pink Himalayan sea salt. Uh, for, try uh, quad color. I know there's so many different peppercorns I can't even can't even keep it straight. Quad color peppercorn bonanza going in there with red, white, black, and pink, pink, pink a peppercorn. Whoop. All right, so we got those in the pan. We got those working, and we are doing real well here. All right, let's go ahead, flip on this other burner here, get that ready to go. Because I'm going to flip those pans around. We are going to start getting our mahi mahi ready to rock and roll. Okay, so let's go right like so. Bam. Let's give you that perspective from up above. Very nice as I have a drink of sodi pop. All right. So we are going to do a uh, two-fold treatment here on our mahi mahi. I'm going to switch cutting boards because this one had veggie. And I've actually got one set right here specifically for the fishes because they're so delicious. And we are going to take our mahi-mahi and place them on the board. There we go. Rock and roll. Making sure to keep a little eye on my asparagus there as we're sizzling away. Give it a little shaky shake, a little extra love there. And let's go ahead and grab... If I can find it, I just had it and I do. 
beautiful bony knife here and we're going to go ahead and cut this uh, mahi mahi down into about one inch strips right there look at that not quite a cube i'm cutting against the grain here to keep the fish together okay so you can see we got the the fish grain going that way so we're going to cut like that that is a good tip always watch the direction of the grain right absolutely and that's true with basically any sort of protein so we're going against the grain to keep that together uh when it comes to fish all right now i'm going to wash my hands here real quickly because we just handled raw protein okay We get it just a little bit. Oh, that asparagus starting to smell mm -hmm. delicious. So simple, so vibrant. Let the vegetable be the star there. We're just trying to give it a little extra enhancement there. Let's go ahead and grab that. Don't want to get too carried away. And we'll check the timer here. Good. All right, little wooden spoon, you're up next. There we go. We are going to season our fish here. But first, we are also going to give them a nice coating with hummus as well so we've got right here some lemon garlic hummus that i'm going to go ahead and spoon out about a quarter cup's worth don't need a a whole heck of a lot because we're just going to get a nice coating on the outside of the fish i got a pan heating up here ready to rock and roll go ahead and take that lid off of it Doing good, doing good. All right, and we are just moments away there. Let's go ahead and drop a little seasoning here with our Mountain Magic base layer of flavor on our fishes. Let's flip them on over. Get that other side, just a nice light. Alexa, stop. There's our timer for our cauliflower. So we're rocking and rolling there. There we go. Once again, get those hands real quick. Then we're going to go in and toss our cauliflower uh, on the tray. Let them go for about another five to 10 minutes here to the desired doneness, right? Pan's going to be hot. Let's get an oven mitt here. We'll lift them out. You don't necessarily have to take the tray out, but I'm going to just to make sure I can see what I'm doing here. I'm all steamed up. I got a lot of that steam going on. They're starting to look real good here. They're starting to look real good. So we'll check them here in another five minutes after mixing them up there a little bit. They're going to be pretty close to being done. Let's go ahead and, and that rotate smells really pans. good. Because you can, there's nothing to see when it comes to asparagus being asparagus there. We'll show you at the end when they have completed cooking. We've got our seasoned fish here. Let's get a little olive oil uh, into our pan. Not a, not a ton, about a tablespoon, just enough to coat it out. That's a large pan we got going on back there. There you go. Fresh pan, asparagus right next to it doing its thing. Back to the counter we go. All right. I'm going to go ahead and just grab it just for ease here since it's on top of a little paper plate here. Uh, and we're going to take our fish that's on the board here and we are going to go ahead and put them on into this hummus and get a light coating of the garlic lemon hummus. So we'll do a few pieces here at a time. I'm just going to grab a spoon out. Just kind of give a nice coating. Uh, any, anything that's too extra, we can use that spoon and take them off there. There we go. Nice, light little coating on there. Onto the paper plate we go. Might just be easier to get in there with my paws and do them real quick. And mahi mahi, very fragile fish, right? So we just want to be careful that uh, we don't max handle it too hard here and end up breaking these little pieces apart, okay? 
it'll be all right, but they'll they they can cook through real quickly uh, and they can dry out very fast. Okay, internal temperature for most fish when you're cooking them, 145 degrees internal temperature. Very rarely do I do I temp fish though, because what we're looking for, whether it's mahi mahi or scallops or shrimp or most white seafood, right, uh, that we are cooking through is we want it to be opaque. That's It should start flaking nicely, and it should be opaque in the center, okay? So if you cr flake one open, and it still has that uh, translucent clear look to it, it's not, it's not where it needs to be, okay? But by all means, uh, I'm not saying I never use a temperature for fish, but that is what you're looking for. Uh, is 145 degrees for doneness and opaque all the way through. Now, that, that's the trick. We've talked about this all week long on Kitsch here, on our shows here. The biggest, the biggest, uh, Luna snoring, cracking me mm -hmm. up. Uh, the biggest uh, problem that people have when it comes to cooking proteins and not having success is overcooking, right? We talked about that with chicken. That's a big problem. Uh, with chicken and why it dries out. Same thing with fish, especially fish. Dries out, can have a leathery texture to it, uh, is because we're overcooking it, okay? There we go. We got all of them with a nice light coating of hummus there. Pan's getting hot. We need to give that asparagus there. Uh, just another uh, shake there. A little color to it, a little char on it. Not a big deal. Some people actually prefer that. Uh, all to each their own, but we don't want it to burn all the way through, right? We don't want to burn a layer here. So we're cooking on that medium heat. Quentin has a question. Do you know what the customs cost will be if I order a sauce or spice? I have no idea off the top of my head, but that is something I can definitely yeah. look into and find out for you. Yeah. I can definitely do that. Uh, I got to actually make a trip uh, to our good friends at the United States Postal Service here. Uh, tomorrow. So I will ask them directly and get some pricing done for that. Cause I know the weights and dimensions and stuff. So let me see, yeah. let me see, let me see, let me see, let <laughs> me see, but I can find that information out for you. Absolutely. Uh, all right, here we go. Asparagus looking good. Cauliflower looking good. Once again, we don't want to overcook things. We are going to pull out here a couple different, uh, trivets. So if I need to get stuff going, let's go ahead, get this raw fish cutting board out of the way into the sink there and we can start doing our mahi mahi and most of this mahi mahi is gonna fit all into my pan in one fell swoop all right we got tongs feel like a castanet dancer with these little tongs there we go we're gonna use that to take care of our fish and we're gonna get a nice sear going on here, hopefully. Let's see how our olive oil is doing. Yes, very good. We're at a good temperature there. Medium heat. Let's go ahead, bring up that stove cam. There we go. Ready to rock and roll. Ready to get our mahi mahi on. That'll give you a, you see that little coating there, hopefully. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Focus. Yeah, it looks good. Looks good, she says. I'm gonna put my dome in there so you can hear that sizzle when it hits the pan and then I knock my noggin on the on the overhang there where I came back out. That's the thud you heard. We can get all these in there. If you're not comfortable with a bunch of stuff in the pan at the same time, you can do them in batches, right? You can do them four or five, you know, do one to start. It's all good. Uh Quentin's gotta go it's late there he's falling asleep have a good night and a great meal said quentin well thank you very much quentin all the way from belgium and straight to your heart mr quentin always a pleasure i'm glad you got to spend a little time with us here today thank you so much rest well i'll check out those shipping rates and i'm sure we will talk to you soon my friend good night quentin all right yes very late in belgium right now and then we're getting a little uh -huh. round of mahi mahi applause there. I love it. <laughs> All right. We're going to start flipping these. These are little inch long pieces, right? So it's not going to take a horrible amount of time to cook these through. We're just going to kind of turn them. If they stick to the pan, that's okay. 
You don't have to get into the scrapey deal. They will release up from the pan uh, if they get stuck there a little bit. These ones are fine. We're getting nice color there. Same thing if you're cooking steaks and stuff. People will get, get worried when we you start getting a little bit of a sear, a little color. If it sticks to the pan, just be patient. Give it a moment. It'll not, See, this one's got a little stick to it, so I'm just going to be patient. Going to be patient. Let it sit for a moment. It should release itself from the bottom of the pan. Oh, and we got some nice smell. We've got some nice vibing going on. Let's see. You're going to come up. There we go. Release itself. And you can see, well, hopefully, probably not super well because these are, if I hold it up there, there we go. Yep, I can see. See that sear right there? That's what's sticking. Did we burn it? No. Did we get a nice little crispy there? Absolutely. So we got crunch. We got texture. We got style. We got flair. And we got it all here. Thanks to you. I'm Montana Max Barbecue TV. Right, Ben? Yes. She's hungry. You can delayed response. Kansas City Jen getting Kansas City hungry. We got to get this moving so we can feed her, right? <laughs> All right. Looks like her timer stopped on her cauliflower there. Gonna go ahead and give that asparagus little little shake. That's probably pretty well done. I'm gonna kick that way down. We're gonna flip these uh, fishes over to the side here. Let's grab out. Oh, it's right here. I already done grabbed it out. I'm going to move this trivet right over there because we're going to plate these up real nice, real nice. Whew. Oh, that smells good. Smells good. We got a little crisp there. Roasted cauliflower seasoned with litter buck seasoning. Added that nice barbecue seasoning to it. Doesn't taste like barbecue. It's not like a lace, lace potato barbecue chip. Keep that in mind. But it's got all those things, including a lovely dose of paprika. Oh, my gosh. Look what's on the chef's table at the Kansas City Gen. <laughs> Holy smokes. Wave to the people there, love. There we go. And you, too, can join the chef's table at any time right over there and join the conversation. I can actually hear you when you're on the chef's table. If you're like, this typing is so barbaric. Well, don't worry. You can talk right with me by hopping on the chef's table. Awesome feature. Only available here on kitsch.com. All right. Watching these. Asparagus looking good. Not going to shake that fish. We're going to turn those in just a moment here. But while we have a quick second, let's go ahead, put on that hot pad. There is our roasted broccoli. You can see we got that lovely color to them now. They're not that stark white. There we go. I got to be careful. I don't want to bump them into the light. We got some beautiful color there. We're rocking and rolling. Those are going to be absolutely dynamite here. Okay. It smells good. Smells good indeed. I'm liking it. We're going to have everything coming up pretty close to the same time here. We're going to be about ready to plate up. All right. Let's just get a little, little side action here. Oh. These fish are pretty much are going to be pretty much done here. Some of these larger ones, I'm going to try to get a little bit of a little bit of sear, a little bit of color on that uh, sides of them as well. Oh, that is gorgeous! I'm loving it. Okay, I'm loving it. Super easy too. That hummus creating that nice color, that nice sear. That's starting to flake apart. We gotta get we gotta get moving here. We gotta get moving. Switch the camera over there. I'm sorry. Yeah, we can do that. Thank you. Here we go. There. Looking good. Tipping these on the side there. Thanks. Thanks, babe, for reminding me. I get get into what we're doing and all of a sudden I forget I'm operating the cameras too. That's flaking apart there. That's the uh that's the center. Look at that. White all the way through, but we've got moisture right there. So we are done. We are ready to go here. I'm going to go ahead and kick that heat off, that residual heat from the pan. We'll finish up any of those larger pieces. That was the thicker one, so we're pretty much ready to go. Let's do this. Let's plate it up. All right. I've got a little bit more lemon garlic hummus that I've got right here that we're going to use the hummus for the coating. And then we are going to, and this is so healthy. It almost makes me sick to think that I'm so healthy. <laughs> But it is. It really is. All right. 
let's get that brand new brand new we'll use up the this one first okay beautiful hummus right here lemon garlic whoa whoa somebody somebody just followed us on twitch there you may have heard yeah. us talk about uh talk about uh our lights in the kitchen there if you follow us on youtube twitch uh facebook mm -hmm. our twitter you'll get a notification that'll change our lights and apparently scare the bejesus out of me so <laughs> somebody just funny. came through and gave us a little follow love there <laughs> on the twitter the follow. so if you're watching us here on kitsch thanks for that follow on twitch as well all right we're gonna go ahead there we go every last bit that Dude. did give me a little bit of the the startles there. Yeah. <laughs> All right. That is some of the best hummus I've ever had. One of Jen's favorites. You've heard so of Oprah's good. favorite things. Well, that pales in comparison to Jen's favorite things. Let me tell you. So we're going to go ahead and do a nice little uh, bed of that coming around right there. About, about kind of like a half moon, right? Half moon. We're going to tuck that in there. Let's get a fresh pair of tongs if I've got them. I do. Let's go ahead and start laying in some of that beautiful roast. Oh, my gosh, the color on this. I'm going to hold this bowl up here in just a moment and show you the beautiful roasting that we got done there in the oven. Let's go ahead and lay some of that down there. We're going to plate this kind of, uh, kind of like... Uh, we're making a beautiful bonsai tree, right? We're gonna make this nice and beautiful, okay? So when I when I present this to Kansas City Judge, she goes, oh my gosh, it's a work of art. I just don't even wanna eat it. It's so darn gorgeous. And I go, honey, but that's what it's for. Oh yeah, I was gonna lift that up real quick. Let's go ahead and flip that over to the, the main cam here. Whoop. Don't go running away there. You can kind of just set it, nestle it in right there. There's the base we got going, but look at that beautiful roasting color there, along mm. with the seasoning yeah, right there. We're great. already off to a dynamic start. How beautiful is that? I am loving every minute of it. Oh, yeah. Well, we got that. Here we go. Beautiful sauteed with just a little of that sea salt and pepper. We got a nice little shimmer there as I get it down into the light. We're looking good. And we don't have we don't have any burnt things. We don't have it, so it's too too wilty right but it's got body it's soft but it's not wilty okay then we're going to come back in and create a little if you will since if we want to keep with that asian theme even though these aren't asian flavors but i kind of set it up with the bonsai we're going to create an asparagus bamboo forest uh in the bowl here fresh vibrant awesome there we go coming through just like so. Oh, that's good. A little dystopia there, dystopian action with some fallen bamboo. I'm, see, we're telling a story with food. I love it. Right? We're going to get that off the heater. And now we can come in with our beautiful mahi mahi here that we've got. Uh, lovely. Mm, yummy. Lovely color there, cooked all the way through. And we want to, now that it's cooked too, we got to be, uh, we got to be a little bit careful and we'll just come in and balance now. And I'm going to actually do that just like that, right along the side there. You can put them on top of the hummus. You can do it wherever you like. Right. But I'm just going to come through just like that. That's great. Ooh, that is a nice looking piece right there. Look at that. Yummy. Yummy, yummy, yummy. I got mahi, mahi in my tummy. Everything's going to be all right. Look at that. Absolutely wonderful. There we go. Easy, breezy, beautiful. Cover girl coming into a bowl. Simple, four ingredients, seasoned up. Now tell me that doesn't kick the butt out of a bologna Ooh. sandwich for lunch. Easy to do. We've been talking, we've been having a show here. So that's 40 minute runtime, right? So you can easily com complete this dish if you got your stuff uh, and you're ready to go. You could do this in probably 20 minutes flat, if not under that. 
how easy is that? I mean, the longest the longest portion of this whole recipe is uh, cooking up, uh, roasting the cauliflower. That's really the wrong, longest portion of this. Mm -hmm. I mean, the uh, asparagus, I probably even went a little extra long on. I mean, it's fine where it is. We saw that. It's not like limp or anything. But we get a couple quick pictures here. And then we'll have Jen taste. The camera eats first. Camera eats first, right? As they say. <laughs> All right. Oh boy, is it my turn? Come on up, Kansas City Jen. It's time for you to taste our beautiful Mahi Mahi bowl. Now, even though we played it separately here, we have our our all of our troops in a row here, right? We've got our Mahi Mahi, our asparagus our cauliflower, and then our beautiful lemon garlic hummus, which requires no treatment uh, uh, at all, any nature here. But the, the goal is to kind of get a little mm. piece of each one on your fork when you have a bite to get that full experience. You will have your, your food separatists, if you will, that like to eat each of their uh, ingredients individually. And that, you know, if that's your deal, that's, that's all well and good. They all will be uh, quite lovely. But... Uh, to grab that full scope of the dish, you should get a little fish, a little asparagus, a little cauliflower, okay. and get that hummus all rocking Ooh, and rolling together for one beautiful bite. It flaked perfectly. Look at that. Really nice. Really nice. Oh, I think I got it all right there. Mm. Are we happy? Oh, yes. We're happy. We're healthy. We are rocking oh, yes. and rolling. It's mm. that easy mm. to make a fresh, vibrant dish. And I'll tell you right here, uh, this is perf perfect meal for two to three people, uh, just with the small portion mm. that we have right here. Very economical dish as well. Uh, and you can substitute uh, the mahi-mahi if you'd like with any sort of whitefish that you'd like. Fabulous. Mm -hmm. Absolutely fabulous. I really like the cauliflower with the asparagus. It's a it's really nice balance too. Oh, look how nice that flakes. Perfect. A little <laughs> bit of crust on the fish. Mm, that's wonderful. There we go, kids. Where's our Montana Max Mahi mm. Mahi? <laughs> you good? Mm -hmm. Mahi Mahi bowl. Super easy, super delicious. And we invite you to try it at home. Also highly customizable. You can throw mushrooms or anything in there. Looks like we're getting a delivery here. There we go. <laughs> uh, but Thank you so much for everyone who joined us on Kitsch today. Scared the bejesus out of me, giving us that lovely follow on Twitch. As you saw, it switched our lights. And if you follow us on YouTube, right, subscribe on YouTube, give us a like on Facebook, or do on Twitch, and you can change the colors of our lights when we're live on air here. That's a lot of fun. Uh, so thank you to everyone for joining us on Kitsch.com. We'll be back tomorrow with another recipe, and we're going to be doing an evening show tomorrow. Remember... You can always click that save my seat uh, function right under the sh upcoming shows to always make sure you're notified when we're going live so you don't miss one delicious minute because it's all so good. So I am Montana Max. This is Kansas City Jen. And as always, for those about to cook. We salute you. We sure do. Take care of each other. We'll see you all tomorrow. Have a great day. Bye. Bye.